Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar which is for us it's uh, quite an unusual time actually so it's good evening from us here in the UK it might be good afternoon or even good morning where you are but wherever you are in the world you are most welcome um, before we start can I just draw your attention to the disclaimer that you should be able to see on your screen? Yep, I'm looking over to David's screen and I can see that you can see it. As you know, trading can be a very risky business. Please, please don't ever think of using money that you cannot afford to lose. So let's just get out of that out of the way and start. Now, uh, lots of reasons why we wanted to move to this, uh, this time in the trading day. Uh, and also, why Tuesday? First of all, obviously, it's the start of the new trading week, the new trading month, and it's also the last quarter before, good heavens, it's uh, Christmas on the horizon and the end of the trading year. And uh, boy, oh boy, it's, uh, I'm glad we chose this evening because it's certainly been lively, to say the least. What we're actually going to be focusing on uh, this evening, we're going to be looking at the indices, certainly what's been happening the last couple of days, perhaps even looking at the monthly chart from a VPA perspective, just to get a view maybe what is going to be happening in the weeks uh, ahead. We are going to be looking at some commodities and I think we've got a couple of stocks as well because um, there have, as I said, really trying to see what VPA can tell us, um, you know, what has been going on and what is perhaps likely to happen and the reason why I've got GE up on my up on my screen is on my MT5 platform is those of you who have um, read the uh, the stock examples book that was launched earlier on in the, in the year this was one of the ones that uh, uh, was written about quite extensively and we featured it a number of times in our webinars and as you can see here there was a there was a huge gap up yesterday because I think the CEO was fired at last I can't believe GE um, you know a blue chip stock going totally in the opposite direction to what the indices and the stock market has been doing and just and I think at one time it was one of the few stocks that was actually had a triple A rating I think Microsoft is the other one but anyway we'll talk about that later because as I said there's, uh, there's lots of lessons there and all supported with the quantum indicators now I've got MT5 up because I wanted to show that if you do have access to an MT5 platform it's a great way um, to download a demo and actually look at you know, study volume price analysis because it does offer, as you can see here, the uh, you know a volume profile, a volume histogram. Now, it's uh, it is a synthetic volume. It's it's not going to be like an exchange volume, but it is good enough to learn the lessons. Now, this is all terribly distorted by this massive gap up. As I said, uh, the CEO left, either fired or they finally got rid of him uh, because of the dire performance of, of the company. Market obviously liked that. Anyway, um, it's just a really nice, easy way to get into these other markets that perhaps, um, you know, without the the bother of opening a futures account or, you know, looking at a brokerage that, uh, you know, you have to pay for data. That's what I'm trying to say. With MT5, you have obviously all the Forex pairs, you've got commodities and you've got uh, stocks as well. I, some of the stocks may not have volume, but the vast majority of them do. So, as I said, from a learning perspective, it's a great platform to go and have a look at. For tonight, we are going to look at MT5, but only briefly. What we're really going to be focusing on is the Ninja Trader platform that David has, and in particular, uh, the quantum indicators that form part of the essentials package. It's part of um, uh, the Ninja Trader tools that we've developed. There's two package, there's two versions that what we call the essentials, which is everything. Um, for the markets, except the forex bits, as it were, and and I was looking at the price of, of of the package, and boy, I can't believe it's so competitively priced. And also, there are two new indicators that have been added to the full package. But I will stop now, and I will pass over to David, and we will actually start. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world, very warm welcome to you. And uh, we're just going to switch over to Ninja Trader. So bear with us a moment. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm doing it or you're doing it. Um, 
Okay, I think Anna's just going to switch uh, switch over. I just show my screen. <clears throat> so that should be coming up. Just looking over Anna's shoulder, that's great. Okay, um, what I want to do this evening, as Anna said, is really just run through some of the indices. We'll take a look at uh, gold, which I've got up on the uh, on the screen layout there, and uh, take a look at uh, the US dollar, it's a couple of stocks, and um, and the indices, and just uh, have a quick whiz round and see what's been going on today. Um, just to point the way, in if you do have any questions, please just drop them in the chat box. If this is your first time you've come to one of these sessions. Uh, we're more than happy to answer them on air, or if they're longer questions, if they're longer questions, or if they're short questions, we'll answer them in the chat box. Anna's got her finger in the air, which means she wants to say something. Hold on a moment. It was David's use of the word question. Um, what we're trying to, what's been very nice with this session, uh, in fact, all the sessions, but this one in particular, is to perhaps try and make it a little bit more interactive. Um, and that is that if you have been trading today, or you've had uh, some success, or perhaps you haven't had. Uh, uh, um, success and something hasn't gone the way that you had hoped that it would go. Um, if you're happy to share uh, that experience uh, with us, we'll be more than happy to look at the charts uh, for you and certainly use it as a, as, as a sort of uh, as, as a bit of a talking point. I know we've got some uh, users in the on the webinar who've actually got the the quantum tools but it really doesn't matter if you know in all seriousness if you know if you've been looking at a particular um, instrument let say gold or or oil or, or you know whatever it is and and uh, you know you you want a little bit more uh, information on it then as I said just uh, you know just drop the question in in the chat box and we'll see we can't promise we can do do them all but you know if there's something there and we'll look at it from the perspective as I said of volume price analysis and you know what is it saying and as I said if you're happy to share whether it's been a success or not, that's entirely up to you. But quite, uh, but quite happy to, uh, um, you know, to, to. I understand there is a private messaging uh, service on on GoToWebinar. So if you want to send a private message, you can do so, and no one else will see it. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks, darling. Yes, indeed. Um, let me just highlight the charts I've got up here, and also the indicators. And what I try to do in these sessions is to not to cram too many indicators onto too many charts and to to try and give you a sense of what works for me and the way I use them and what may work for you. There's lots of different ways of using them. Basically at the top left we've got the tick speedometer and the tick speedometer is designed if you are trading on tick charts on NinjaTrader. And what it will deliver is several different things. It gives the opportunity to blend volume price analysis in other words this is a three minute time frame and you've got the volume below and you've got the price action above so you've got the opportunity to to use it not only in conjunction as a vpa tool but also in the sense of giving you the optimal speed settings down here for the appropriate tick chart and remember that tick chart settings for every single instrument and market will vary. They will vary hugely between commodities and indices and stocks. So every single stock or every single index or every single commodity will have a different tick, tick setting, tick speed. And in addition to that, it will constantly change through the trading session. So these numbers will vary. A lot of traders who trade intraday will just take a tick setting from a friend, fellow trader, whatever it may be, and they will use that ad nauseam throughout the session and day after day. Well, realistically, does it make sense? No, because at the very least, tick activity speeds up and slows down during the day. So it's something that you need to be aware of so that you're trading with the market. You're trading at the speed of the market and not some undefined speed that you've just guessed at or been given by somebody else. So that's the tick speedometer. And what it also does very clearly, it gives you the sense of when activity is high, medium or low. And when the market's moving into low periods of activity, it highlights in red. And when the market is running at sort of average speed, the normal, if you will, it's orange. And when you get these high uh, levels of activity, it goes to green. Alongside that, I've actually got both a tick chart here and on a separate tab, I've got the Renko because both those uh, types of application or types of charts are independent of time. 
And that's why they're one of the reasons they're very popular with traders, particularly intraday traders, because it removes that aspect of time. And what you see on a non-time based chart is very much raw momentum revealed. So I've got those both set up. And gold's been a great example today of using the combination of time based charts and non time based charts to help in keeping you in those positions through the inevitable pullbacks and reversals, which are the absolute pivotal points of trading success, if you will. It is at those points in time when if you can hold a position in the market and maximize the return on that particular position that you've got into, then that is what ultimately will define your success and also how quickly you are able to move forward in terms of your trading account because the trading mass is very simple. It's basically managing loss, keeping losses small, having several small losses which are then counterbalanced by less frequent but larger wins. That is the mathematics of trading. It doesn't work in any other way. And the, so the key point is always to try and keep in, once you're in a position in the market, the getting in bit's the easy bit. It's the staying bit that's so damn hard. And that is the point at which you have to try and manage your emotion and the indicators are there to help you in that respect, of which the trend monitor is a classic example. I'll come back to that on, on gold in a moment. This is the December contract. So we've got the, the Renko and the tick here. Down at the bottom left, I'll just pop this up full size, make it a little bit easier to see. This is gold. This is the daily chart for gold. We've been trading in this uh, narrow range here with uh, resistance above. We've got a support platform below. It was breached the other day. It looked as though it was going to break to the downside. The yellow line here is the volume point of control. So we've been in this phase of price action for a long time. Um, a lot of the uplift in, well, there's two reasons for the uplift in gold today. Firstly, uh, it's um, a certain amount of, of safe haven buying based on news out of Italy predominantly. And secondly, of course, it's uh, the fact that we've seen some, some weeks in the dollar. So that has helped gold. But in terms of where it is longer term, it's still very much in a consolidation phase. We've moved from 1300 down to 1200. We've been trading around this, this zone for a long, long time now with the volume point of control. And what we're waiting for now is a break away from these regions. Certainly, we had it down here to 1185. It's managed to claw its way back. And the, uh, the, the, um, the uh, positive aspect to today's news has helped it. Nevertheless, as you can see on the Renko, this was the move up in. Uh, certainly, this is the, one of the really nice things with Ninja is that you can pinpoint the time of day that things occurred. It's quite hard on MT5 and MT4 because those time stamps are based on server location or broker location. But in terms of Ninja, we're in the UK here. So as we move through this, this is 13.04. This is, this is actually one o'clock in the afternoon, our time. We get to two o'clock, 2.30, three o'clock, so on and so forth. This was a really nice, strong run. As you can see on the Renko, the Renko optimizer, it, re, it removes all those, that noise of the market that is so damaging. And it's just a really nice way to use it. And I've got a 10 minute chart of the, of the gold contract here below. Obviously, you've got a similar picture. You get the volume coming in here. This is the open. This is 1.30. Then we go to 2 o'clock. This is the open of the, uh, the physical exchanges, commodities, and so on and so forth. But you can see the associated volume. And what you also start to, <clears throat> excuse me, what you also start to see here from a VPA perspective is that as we reach this region up here, if we compare these volumes, certainly these two volume bars with this volume bar, and remember when you're comparing volume, you've always got to compare it within the same session. And here we are, we're comparing it within the same session. We're not comparing it with what went on in Globex over here where the volume is now compressed. We're actually comparing it with, with a similar session. So when you start to look at the volume profiles here and you look at this volume here and this volume here and this volume here, and you start to look at the associated price action up here, this is just starting to give you a sense that there is some weakness coming into this market. Now, clearly, if you're using this in combination with, for example, a Renko chart, 
it's just a very powerful way of combining traditional volume price analysis with a non-time based chart which has benefits of it of its own it doesn't have the vpa relationship but it has the, the the facet of momentum and it also has the facet that it removes the noise from the market and when we're trading on vpa alone we want to see that noise because these spikes in in the uh, candles are really important they are very demonstrable they tell us an awful lot they tell tell us when there's weakness coming into the market they tell us whether there's strong buying strong selling and so on and so forth and this is just a very good example and when you look at the associated volume so for example we'd look at this volume here what was the price action associated it was pretty wide yes we had volatility with it but nevertheless we had a very strong move higher of what are we looking at about three three dollars an ounce there so if we're using that as our benchmark we look at these two now looking at these two we should see similar sort of price moves we're not we're starting to see initial weakness on the first one because we've got a wick to the upside there is a little bit of buying in there but it's predominantly selling which has forced the price off the high the market then tries to rally further but again similar sort of price action big wick to the top side closes roughly halfway down the candle so we know for a fact there's a lot of selling coming in at this point the markets had a strong rally and it's not surprising that we're seeing people take profit off the table it big time with a lot of volume going in what's also interesting is we then move on to the next candles we see some congestion building then we see this we think well you know is this market going to carry on higher but then you look at the volume associated with it and if you relate it to what went on here in terms of the volume then for a move of that uh, size we would expect to see certainly more volume than is being described there so again what it's telling you is that yes there has been further buying but that buying is is falling it's not aligned with the candle itself in other words it's looking like an anomalous situation it's looking though as though we should see more volume but we're not actually seeing it on that particular candle and then we see further sideways and now we're starting to see the market come off not hugely but we're starting to see it come off nevertheless and then obviously we start to look at the the indicators particularly the trend monitor which takes a more considered view of the price action and as you can see here we've gone into bright blue then we've gone into dark blue we've gone into dark red and then we've gone into bright red here we've gone back into dark red again because when we're in congestion and obviously at this point we have to be patient but that is the sort of color sequence that you'd like to see when a market is topped out it's starting to transition and when you put that all together with all the other aspects of the price action and you'd also be looking at this obviously in different time frames you'd have multiple time frames and maybe you're running this in combination with the Renko as well and you're putting the whole thing together and that's the reason I like to have the trend dots on the Renko it's a personal decision um, I rather have them on the the Renko chart rather than on the time based chart because I think they work so well on the Renko uh, they transition much closer to the price action which is why when the market starts to reverse you start to see these revert to gray we've gone back into blue a little bit then we had the gray one come in and now we've reverted to red as we begin the downtrend and again as you can see we've got the trend monitor on here which is trying to help you either stay in or to make the decision to exit if you were along the market because now we're seeing this transitional color here of dark blue then we've gone to dark red and now we're into bright red so that's really just a walk through in terms of gold let's go and have a look at um, I mentioned the dollar I've got this on a 15 minute time frame and let's just put that maybe just put that to no let's leave it on the 15 there we go um, so we had this was the the move in in the dollar which uh, restarted pretty much about the same time as the upwards move in the in price of gold and indeed other commodities also because as I'm sure you know they're all priced in dollars so the one index you've got to have when you're trading commodities is the dollar index because what you'll see reflected in the dollar not always it is a relatively close relationship but like all these relationships it does break down from time to time but it is the key chart when you're trading commodities because it will give you a heads up on when those markets may reverse 
driven purely through the sentiment for the dollar. I think I'm right in saying that uh, was it um, was Powell speaking earlier on, and uh, that's essentially what uh, brought a little bit of a pause to the bearish sentiment intraday for the dollar, which caused this little bit of a rally. And you can see here we're now starting to to come off a bit as we come towards the end of the session. The Dow is up a record high, as Anna's just reminded me. I've got this right. Let me just pop this up full size, make it a little bit easier to see. Um, this is the monthly chart for the YM. And the YM is the futures contract for the Dow. And it's one of those charts which could apply to anything. The fact that it's a monthly chart is. Um, extraordinary really but it's the one chart that frightens everyone to death because it raises that statement in everyone's mind that the market cannot go any higher the market cannot carry on like this forever ultimately of course that is true but every time we get a a knee-jerk reaction to some global event or uh, there's a reaction to fundamental news or whatever it may be. Um, everyone starts calling the top, and you know, dear old Jesse Livermore said, "There's no, there's never a market that's too high to buy or too low to sell." I paraphrase, but that's essentially what he was saying. And it is very much uh, true to say that you have to read the chart and forget about the emotive response, which is, "Gosh." this market cannot go any higher. Well, who's to say it won't? And it probably will. And what's interesting about the monthly is not only the extent of the monthly, the fact that you've got the trend monitor on there, which has been flagging it bullish with no, this was never, when we had this uh, sharp reversal in February and March, it was just a classic reaction. It was a classic opportunity for the insiders and the market makers to bring this market to a shattering, shuddering halt to jump into that market, to buy in volume. And we've seen it many times before. We saw it over here. And this was another classic. And then we had a repeat of it here again. High volume, shake the market out, move in to buy, uh, clearly demonstrated by the depths of the wick below and then take it on to the next level. On this occasion, we had the volatility candle triggered, so it was almost inevitable that's what was going to happen. The market closes up here. We had very, very strong buying, but you're expecting the market to consolidate anyway because that's part of the function of the volatility indicator. It's unusual to see it on the monthly. As I say, we've got one here and another one over here, but exactly the same, very sharp move downwards, massive amount of buying, bring the market back up, trade in the zone within the range of the candle, and then on up we go. Exactly the same pattern here, on up we go. And now we're starting to break out into new high ground. In terms of the volume profiles, pretty much as you would expect. Uh, in fact, July and August were probably a little bit higher than, than we might normally expect. September was fine. We'll have to see how October closes off. But that's the chart for the YM on the month. Just go ahead back to the daily chart for today. That's where we are on the day. And as you would expect, that's pretty much reflected. Um, and what's also interesting about it is we have got the volume point of control on here. Where you get to these low volume regions of volume on the histogram on the right hand side of the chart, when the price action gets to those levels, then you're expecting the market to move through there fairly quickly because there's very little in the way of resistance to uh, cause the market to pause. So as a trader, whether this is a one minute chart or a one month chart doesn't make any difference. It's the fact that it is a, it's giving you a heads up in terms of anticipating what is like to happen when the market reaches those particular points. Because what the VPOC indicator does is basically gives you a different perspective on support and resistance. Traditional support and resistance is based on price. Absolutely, uh, you know, it, it goes without saying. We're all familiar with that concept. It's uh, it's baked into to, to, to technical analysis. What the volume point of control does is it takes volume up onto the y-axis of the chart 
and combines volume, price, and time. So the longer markets are in congestion in these regions, then the greater will be the density of volume that sits there and is then likely to cause a barrier to price action advancing or declining. And where you have thin volume here, for example, you don't expect the market to pause there for very long and the volume point of control sits on the heaviest volume of tall of all. That is the, the fulcrum of the market where the market, generally speaking, has remained the longest. And once it starts to break away from there, then price agreement has been reached either bearish or bullish. And then that's backed up by, by traditional volume price analysis, linear volume price analysis of comparing the candle price action with the associated volume. Uh, what else have we got down here? We've got the NQ. What's interesting about the NQ is that's actually come off quite a little bit. Um, whilst the, there we got the YM on the daily. What have we got this one? This was on the 15 minute. Let's put that back on. Let's put the NQ. The NQ is the uh, futures contract for the NASDAQ. That's come off a little bit more than uh, the YM. And we've seen that a lot over the last few weeks and months where we've seen perhaps a very strong move in the NQ, not so much reflected in the YM and then vice versa. And we've seen sharp moves lower in the NQ when actually the, the, the Dow Jones is up. So there's a lot of um, um, divergence. divergence between, thank you, Diane, divergence between the three of them, between the NQ, the YM and the ES, which is the S&P 500, which has been interesting to say the least. Normally, under normal conditions, you would expect all three to move pretty much in lockstep. They're either up or down on the day. Over the last few weeks and months, or say, we've seen divergence there, which is quite interesting and often driven by big moves in single or groups of, groups of stocks in the NQ particularly. And there we are on the ES. Just going to pause there for a moment, just see if there are any, any questions. Yeah, I'm just going to switch over to, let's change to another market. Let's go and have a look and see what uh, oil's doing. Um, just got the tick chart there. That's 233 on gold. That's Renko. Renko, I've got it on, I've got it pretty slow actually at the moment on here. I've got it on eight. Um, but if I change that time frame, that was a five minute time frame a little while ago. If I change that to one minute and we'll just see what that will deliver now, just give you an idea of, okay, there we go. So we're now on a two brick Renko setting. And that gives you some idea of how sluggish the market is now. When we were running this a few hours ago, that was running at the, what was it? The eight brick, I think. Uh, in other words, eight uh, cents per uh, on the gold price. Now we're running at two brick Renko. In other words, two cents on the gold price. So it just gives you a, an idea of the, the speeding up and the slowing down of this market. And that's what the Renko Optimizer does. It basically delivers the setting, the optimal. You can choose the time frame. You can have one, two, three, whatever you want on here. Um, but it will basically deliver the optimal setting for the fastest time frame that you choose. So you're actually, you're actually trading on the Renko chart at the correct setting. Let's move over to have a look at oil. Uh, we're on 11.18. We're on November contract for that one. Just wait for that to load a minute. These charts are all linked, which is another nice feature on Ninja Trader. This... Oh, sorry. Oh, beg your pardon. Sorry. I'll go back to the base chart. There we go. Sorry. <clears throat> I've got these on tabs. This is Ninja Trader 8. You can tab down here. You can add all the different tabs it's great it's just a really nice feature on nt8 which you don't have on nt7 it's one of the things one of the many things they added on ninja trader 8 uh, this is all oil now as i say you can link all, everything together with this little green um or this little uh feature here you can instrument link or you can time frame link as well uh, oil's been pretty bullish over the last there we go um over the last uh well, several, several weeks, in fact. And in fact, if I go back to the monthly, I know this seems like a long time frame, but it's, a, it's an interesting chart because it just gives a sense of where all the buying came in for oil. If you remember, oil was, was 
falling, it was under pressure, it was under pressure for lots of different reasons. And it was down at $30, $40 a barrel, and there seemed no prospect of it uh, recovering. But actually, I hope this is going to load in a minute, sorry. <clears throat> no, it's not, it's just up here loading. Um, should do it in a minute. Um, I'm not sure why it's taking so long. There we go. There we go. Apologies. Um, there we go. So we got down, just move the chat box out of the way. We got down to these very low numbers down here of 35, 37, 38 dollars a barrel. And then we were flip flopping around here for an awful long time. And this phase of price action is just the classic, classic accumulation phase of uh, price action, which happens in all markets, all time frames from one minute right the way through to literally what we're looking at here, which is a monthly chart. Uh, over here, just to give you some idea of perspective, this is uh, 2012, 2013, 14. So each of these is a year, basically, 15, 16, 17, 18, and we're three quarters of the way to, through 2018. And through this phase here, this is the bulk of the buying. This is where it all happened. This is where the accumulation by the big operators are constantly buying, buying, buying. You can see these massive volume spikes. This is just an anomaly uh, of, of immense proportions. You've got this narrow spread down candle. The market closed that down on the month, but a ton of volume coming in. That can only be one thing. That is buying. It started off here. I think we actually wrote a post about it at the time where we saw this stopping volume coming in. And you can see the general pick up in volume here associated with the volume over here. It is massive. You know, this is huge buying coming in here, buying coming in here, buying here again. You've got the market falling, wick to the underside, ton of volume coming in. You had it here. The market falls here, fairly light, the volume. Then you start to see the move away. And as, that, as this develops, you're starting to bring in all the other aspects. You're starting to bring in support and resistance. Uh, yes, you've got a whole bunch of fundamental drivers around uh, oil. Of course you have. You've got OPEC. You've got uh, the alternative energy producers. You've got uh, the politics of OPEC. You've got uh, Venezuela. You've got uh, you know Iraq. Iran. The, the whole gamut is in here. But from a, a very, I was going to say, a very simple VPA perspective, it's all here. You've had the... The, uh, the price waterfall, the massive selling off the highs, the into the price waterfall, then you start to see into uh, potential buying at the bottom, then you start to see this extended congestion phase, and now we're starting to come out into the uptrend. And all of that, again, you know, is reflected on the trend monitor. At the bottom here, it was bright red, obviously, going through this phase. As this picked up through here a little bit, we had a minor uh, transition into darker red then we went back into bright red then we're into darker red eventually we go into darker blue here and then we're off into the bullish phase that we're seeing at the moment and um, you know that's that's where we are right now the question is where is oil heading well what's interesting from this very long-term perspective is that as we get towards the 80 or 82 dollars a barrel two things first of all we've got some pretty strong price resistance but that's actually counterbalanced by the fact that from a volume perspective this volume area here is very lightweight so if oil does reach this sort of 82 83 84 dollars a barrel then from a volume perspective there is very little to cause it to pause at that region so we would expect price to go through there fairly rapidly. So it will be interesting to see that clearly once we get up into the sort of 90s and 95s, we're going to be running into this fairly serious area of price congestion to the left of the chart, which is always a key region to, to consider. So it's an interesting chart and um, one that we're very familiar with. Let's just pop that back on the daily. In terms of the daily price action today, it's come off a little bit, uh, you know, nothing uh, to frighten the horses as far as that's concerned. Very bullish on the on the trend monitor, trend trend lines rising, 
we had this thin volume on the V part, which saw the the, vo the price action slice through there pretty quickly yesterday. Uh, the only thing I would say about yesterday's price action is, that from a volume perspective, looks a little bit lightweight to me in terms of you know a comparison. When you're looking across the chart, you're looking for price comparison all the time. Kind of compares okay with that one, although that candle is a little bit less than this one so we would expect perhaps to see more volume associated got a high volume bar over here much wider candle that candle is bigger than this one so you should see more volume which is true but then this volume looks a little bit lightweight compared to that one so you know that's basically what you're looking at the whole time so given that and if you were trading oil today and Obviously, you've got to take all the other aspects of dollar and, and fundamentals and news and etc. Uh, you might be expecting it to come off a little bit. And also the fact that given it was a big update yesterday, inevitably there's some profit taking in there also, which happens in all markets, as I'm sure you appreciate. Um, exactly the same way. What's interesting, if we go to the tick, the tick on gold at that, uh, at that at this time of day was 233. And you can see over here on, on oil, very, very different. We're running at 55 or 72 ticks. So just change that over to 72. <clears throat> just so we're trading at the right speed of the market. But it does actually make the point that, uh, you know, the difference between two markets is huge. Um, I put a couple of stocks in. In fact, I put this one in, you, in here and you might wonder why. Um, this is a stock called, I don't know what they do. Um, well, I know what sector they're in because I got them from um, a sector. Let me just drop that down for a minute and show you where I got that from. Sorry about that. Where are we? Stock screen. Here we are. Sorry. Oh, uh, sorry. Yes, Anna wants to show you. She's on the front page of investing. There we go. That's Anna. Um, this is Finviz. If you're not familiar with Finviz, this is the free version. It's a fantastic site um, for stock selection, screening, news, you name it, it's pretty much here. It's a bit annoying with the adverts which pop up and you also get videos all the time. So I'm hoping I don't get one of those. Um, so, you know, this is the free version. Yeah, with Cheapskates, we're using a free one at the moment. But it's a brilliant site. And what I actually did on here was if, you're, if you're a stock trader, you're an intraday trader or an investor, um, one of the things that you have to decide on clearly is you can't look at uh, 10 or 15,000 stocks. You've got to have some sort of filtering process for whatever tactical approach you're taking to the market. You might be looking at longer term investing. You might be looking at intraday trading. You might be looking for particular patterns. You might be looking for particular volume profiles. Uh, you name it, it's here. And all I've done on here is, is just go in and select something very simple to, to come up with a short list. I set the exchange to the New York Stock Exchange. I put the sector in this basic materials because I thought it'd be quite interesting to see what's coming up in terms of gold. Because gold's had a very good day and you would expect that to be reflected in some of the gold stocks, which indeed it has. You've got several here. Um, I'm not suggesting you trade any of these. Some of these are, are, are a little bit small. I haven't, um, you can change, you can select obviously up here on market cap, but I haven't, uh, I haven't put that on for the time being. But what I did do, I was, I was interested, I just put here, change from the open. In other words, the price has gone up by 4% today from its open. So that's a pretty high figure. Normally, uh, we would look for a 2% move on, on the day, something like that, to, to give you a sense of stocks which are actually moving. But I put 4% up just to see what was, uh, what was uh, just to put a very high limit on and reduce the list to something a bit more manageable. And one of the nice things down here is you can flick through these very, very quickly and eyeball them as to, you know, is this something I'm going to be interested in or not? Um, personally, uh, I wouldn't be interested in that. Well, I might be interested in shorting it, but it's a, it's a 16 cent stock, so probably not. Um, that looks like a skyrocket stock. That's gone just ridiculous in uh, four days, so probably not. Um, that one could be of interest. That's $4. That looks like a nice, really nice breakout. Um, in fact, might have a look at that. That's UAN. There's another one. Would I be interested in that? Probably not. Nothing of interest there. No possibly be interested in that one because that looks as though it's been consolidation starting to move away from consolidation 
Uh, absolutely not. No, no interest whatsoever. No, that's 38 cents. Couldn't be bothered with that. This is the one I picked up. This is RES. Don't know what they do. They're an oil and gas equipment services. The moment they've moved 4.26%. And that's why I thought, you know, let's go and have a look at that one. So I've actually pulled it up on here just to give you an idea because it's um, it's a really nice example of the sort of things that you might be looking at for uh, a break away from a congestion phase where something's been in congestion for some time. You're seeing a strong move. We haven't got the volume down here as of yet because I've got this set to volume uh, to, to appear on the close of the day and not in real time. And it's just the way I like to do it. You know, you can have it real time. It's just a setting on Ninja Trader, um, but it just closes off at the end of the day and it'll fill in the volume. Now, something like that, when you look at a pattern like that, when you see the volume point of control is down here, uh, you've had the transition on the trend monitor, it's turned blue. Uh, you've clearly got some, some buying under here. It's a little bit distorted by this massive amount of buying that came in here under this volatility candle. And you had a similar thing here occur here. Ton of volume, big wick to the bottom, clearly some buying coming in. Same again here. Volatility, lots of buying coming in there. The market does move south a little bit. We find support down at 13 and then we start to move away. The thing with VPA is that it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen the following day necessarily. It may do on occasions it does, but generally speaking, it doesn't. What happens is you'll see something. It will set the alarm bell ringing. You'll get terribly excited. You'll probably jump into the market and then maybe you have to wait a few days or a few hours or a few minutes, whatever it is, time frame you're trading before that actually then um, converts into what you are anticipating you to expect to happen next. In other words, it doesn't automatically happen the day after, but it will, generally speaking, happen within a decent time frame. And at those points, you have to be patient. Occasionally, you do see it. Occasionally, you'll see a very strong signal, tons of buying, maybe a big hammer candle, for example, a lot of buying, and the market just goes vertical. It happened once, I think, from memory on um, the indices last year or maybe the year before, uh, where you get what we call a V-shaped rally. In other words, the market collapses. You get a couple of days of very, very strong buying, and then it immediately takes off in the other direction and go and rises just as rapidly. It happens not very often, I have to say. This is much more common. We see the market congest. We see the buying come in, the market congests, and then it starts to move, and then off we go. We've broken through this very strong region of resistance around 15. So we've got a very strong platform underneath us now as we move up to, uh, what are we, 16, 22, 23. Been interesting to see what the volume is with that. But that's just a nice example of setting some parameters on a stock uh, and a sector and just flicking through very, very quickly to highlight any ones which may be of interest to you in terms of what you're looking for. You could be looking to short, for example. You could be looking at the reverse of this, where you've seen a 4% move and it's been to the downside. Maybe a market's collapsed away from the VPOC. Maybe it's collapsed away from a very strong congestion phase it's been in. As long as it's supported with volume and confirmed, it's just a nice way of, of using a stock screen like that to give you a heads up on, on what is going on. Um, Let's just go back to, let's just see what's going on in terms of gold. Uh, sorry, in terms of oil. Um, let's just have a look at uh, silver, because that'll be pretty much following oil. I think we're on 12.18 on that one. <clears throat> on the December contract for that one as well. That's just loading up. Generally, Gold and silver will move in lockstep together, not always. Let's just see what the Renko setting is for that one. Let's go to the minute again. You click on the time frame and then the indicator calculates the setting for you and delivers it on the uh, setting down here. It'll just come up in a moment and say it's a, it's a two or three, whatever it is. Yeah, um, I'll do that next time. Yeah, I'll do that next time. No problem. Just waiting for that. Sorry, it's a little bit sluggish now. I don't know why. There we go. 
And actually what's interesting is come up with a one, a one brick. In other words, as we're coming to the fag end of the markets, you know, we're starting to move into Globex now. Uh, it's everything's slowed down. We're a little bit sluggish. We've got the crossover phase coming in and we're now moving on a single cent per dollar for silver. So each of these bricks will be a, a cent. And just down on the 10 minute chart there, just going finally just to round off on the on the time horizon again. You know, similar sort of principles as we saw on the gold chart. Um, we had the volatility come here. Lots of volume under that. You know, it's to be expected. The markets move pretty rapidly. That's fine. Then you start to see not that much reduced volume and very narrow price action. And that is giving you a, a warning signal. It's not a signal that the market's suddenly going to roll over, but it's certainly a warning signal. We're seeing volume driven into the market, volume driven into the market, more volume going in. And the market is not rising rapidly. It's, it's got that sense of spinning wheels. Of the analogy I've always used in the past is of someone driving a car up a, an, ice, an icy hill. And if you imagine that, applying more pressure to the accelerator, to the gas, and what actually starts to happen is you get to a point where the wheels start spinning and you're not actually moving forward at all. And, and in some cases, if it's steep enough, you'll be going backwards. And that's pretty much what's happening here. In other words, under from Wyckoff's perspective, there's lots of effort going in here, but the result doesn't warrant the effort. So the market must be struggling at that point. And that's what you start to see. And then gradually it starts to roll over. And the indicators follow it and we're into the the bearish trend lower and now we're into congestion phase and you bring in all the other aspects we've got uh, some some relatively minor resistance here which is building in this region it's been tested what one two three times so far and we've got some very strong potential support below if we get down to this level and even more down at the 14 spot 55 area so let's pop that down there we go i'm just going to pass back to anna Okay. I thought I'd just let David, he was on a bit of a real roll this evening, so I just uh, I just let him go. <laughs> I often do that, it's a bit naughty actually. Um, right, what I wanted to say with uh, with regard to the support and resistance, I'm, um, I'm going to come over back to my screen, but uh, um, just have a quick look at the MT5. And this is a question we asked all the time is, well, you have all these levels, uh, however they're calculated, you might do them manually, you might have trend lines, you might use Fibonacci, you might use uh, Elliott Wave, you might use um, proprietary indicators based on, on just price action, or you might use um, our, our VPOC, or you might use market profile, uh, volume strips, uh, volume at price, they all highlight significant points on the chart um, from a resistance perspective or a support res uh, perspective. And we can know all the theory and you think, yeah, well, that's awfully interesting, but what do you actually do with them? And there is, and I have to say, there is no, there is no right or wrong answer. And in fact, those of you who, um, uh, who know us uh, will know that um, we often um, reference um, a couple of sites. One of them is Forex Live and one of them is Forex Flow. There's a, a guy there who was at Forex Live, uh, Ryan, Ryan Littlestone, who's now over at Forex Flow. And he wrote a really good, very detailed article about support and resistance. He says, however you calculate your support and resistance, you as a trader, you have to decide whether you are waiting for a particular level, a support and resistance level, because you want to sell against it, or you're waiting because you want to buy off it. And and even he, who's you know, who's been at, the, I think he was a, he was a was he a local? Was he another local, David? He was. He was a, on the Liffey Exchange. He tried to, as I said, and the, and the article is is excellent, and I'll, I'll put a link on it on my on my Facebook page. He really does say it sounds, you know, he wishes he could give. We, we all wish we could give you a definitive answer, saying, you know, when it reaches this level, buy. When it reaches this level, sell. You can't do that. Fibonacci is is a classic one. Um, you get 20 Fibonacci traders in a room. 
and you ask them to mark up a chart, they will not mark it in exactly the same way. They will all have their, their uh, uh, significant high and significant low, but they will work with it. So when it gets to 50, when it gets to 38, when it gets to, it doesn't matter. So, so you could argue then, well, why have the support and resistance level on your chart? Because if there is no de definitive answer, and the reason is it's, they are significant to the market and to other traders because this is actually a, a zero sum game. You know, there is a winner and there is a loser. And it's in the interpretation of those support and resistance levels and knowing this and understanding their significance and bringing in also all the other aspects um, surrounding the, the instrument. So you have on the technical side, you have volume price analysis, but you'll also have the fundamentals, you'll have the politics, you'll have the, you'll have the, uh, um, um, the related markets and how all they integrate. And the best example we've had of that is what's been happening over the last couple of days with both uh, the, the NAFTA and uh, Euro. And I jokingly said, oh, you know, put up my a post that is on investing.com. And I think the reason they took it is because what has happened in been happening in Italy, uh, what has been happening with uh, the Canadian GDP on Friday and also what happened over uh, over the weekend, it all brought it together you had all this background, then you had the support and resistance uh, levels. So you have to sort of bring everything together. It is complex. Uh, we can't deny that it is complex. There is, it is a jigsaw puzzle that you have to put together. But with, if you don't have the support and resistance levels, you, you don't really have a framework you have a, 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 a for the chart. What you choose and how you, you know, which are the most important ones from your perspective, that is down to you. We can't tell you this is more important than another. But from a uh, um, from a VPA perspective, we have the volume point of control because that helps us more than anything in identifying those areas of congestion and really sort of pulls everything together for us because it's volume, price, and time. Is there anything you want to add to that, David, or is that? Is that, is that fairly clear? So, but if you have any questions on anything we've said, you know, please just drop me uh, uh, an email. That's Anna at AnnaCooling.com. And if you want uh, questions on the um, on the indicators, uh, just actually, if you email David, David at uh, QuantumTrading.com. Sorry, that's my grandson. That's our grandson Max there, and on the back there. <laughs> Sorry, my back. Are you on my screen? You shouldn't be on your screen. I've, I've closed over. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry, I apologize. I thought I'd uh, flipped you over, and in fact, I hadn't. There we are. Right, we're just back on the MT5. Can you see it? No, I think you've got to flick. You've got to click something saying so you agree. No? Will it? Will it not come over? Do you want to do it? Apologies, hold on a sec. Apologies about that. We're just getting confused with our, our, our screens. We're back on the, on as I said, on the GE. I'm actually um, going to have... Uh, I'll get my ninja up for next time. Is that okay, David? Yeah, yeah. So um, leave him. Uh, it's a bit unfair to get him to do all the heavy, heavy lifting in the webinar. But very, very quickly before we wrap up, I just wanted to um, highlight for you. As I said right at the beginning, what we've been using today are the what we call the ninja uh, essentials. And these the indicators that make up the the package. In fact, David was was showing the vast majority of them. As I said here, the cost of the package is is, is seven four nine, and the, there are two new indicators that we've added to the package. One of them is the Renko Optimizer, which we'll discuss in a little bit more detail uh, next week because it is a very very particular indicator. And there's also another one, a Camarilla, again support and resistance. You can. Um, watch the videos about the indicators at uh, quantumtrading.com. There are there's a ton of videos there on each of the individual indicators just to explain 
how you know why we develop them and how you can use them as i said it it is it's not the complete package because there is a forex element but for this session we are really you know we're trying to keep away from forex we'll refer to forex but we really want to focus more on stocks commodities and the indices and maybe later on look at perhaps uh, options because one of the things about understanding what is going on on the chart in terms of the price cycle will dictate the optimal option strategy and we can explain that in a little bit more detail when we look at um, stocks as I said in in, uh, in, um, in in more detail that's all I've got that's all I've got to say on that so very basically that's here we are quantumtrading.com if you've not headed over there before um, you can buy just one indicator you can buy a discounted bundle or you can buy the complete package and if you buy just one and, and it's uh, or one or two and you want to upgrade we will of course um, credit you for uh, the ones that you have uh, purchased. Um, it's a lifetime license, they're all free upgrades and there is a seven day money back guarantee. So if you don't like the indicators, you're more than welcome to return them. I think that's all I've got to say. Is there anything you want to add, David, or is that it? No? Fine. That's, that's it. That's uh, any more questions? Let's have a look very quickly. No. Nope. That's so it's great to work on the indices. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you very much, Melanie. Brilliant. Listen, um, have a well. It's very late. It's late for us, so uh, it's a walking the dog, and then it's I think it's bed, isn't it? <laughs> um, and we're actually back tomorrow morning. We've got a forex uh, session, uh, which starts at 7:15 London time. So if you're coming along to that, we uh, you are more than welcome. Otherwise, we are back. Are we back next Monday again? Uh, next are we back to Monday next week? Yes, I'm not sure actually. So um, please just watch out for your email. It'll either be Monday or Tuesday, but it will be at this time. So thanks very much for coming along and we will see you next time. Take care.